Alum is the hydrated double salt of aluminum and sulfate alongside either ammonium, sodium, chromium, or most often, potassium. Alum has an extremely long history of usage by humankind as a flocculant in cooking or water purification, and as a mordant in dyeing and leatherworking. I've used alum once before on this channel as a flocculant to precipitate cochineal red pigment, and at the time I promised I'd show how to make alum from scratch. I kind of forgot about this, and now, only eight months later, I'm going to finally show how anyone who might still be interested how you can very easily make potassium alum using a couple of very basic chemicals you can probably find around the house. Now before I get into this synthesis, I want to quickly give a special shout out to Carter Scientific who recently provided me with several pieces of laboratory equipment and glassware to support my work here. They'll most likely pay me for saying this, but as you know if you've watched me long enough, I enjoy showcasing lab equipment and I do it for free. And I'll go more in depth later in an upcoming lab equipment video I'm working on, but for now I will say that their products are of very high quality for a price I haven't been able to find lower anywhere else. And in fact, when they reached out to me, I found that I already had several pieces of their glassware, including my nearly six-year-old Erlenmeyer flask. Now I'm not going to lie and say their glassware is higher quality than genuine German Pyrex, but I personally don't have the budget to pay $20 for a single beaker. And at this point, as long as I've been doing this, I can pretty much guarantee that you're going to have a hard time finding higher quality glassware at this price point literally anywhere else. So I highly recommend checking them out. Anyway, to get started making alum, I needed to dissolve some aluminum metal in a concentrated solution of potassium hydroxide. And my source of aluminum here is simply aluminum foil. And potassium hydroxide is typically sold as caustic potash by soap making suppliers. It's important to be really careful during this process as potassium hydroxide is extremely caustic, corrosive, and reacts more aggressively than the majority of the chemicals I work with. Specifically, potassium hydroxide generates enough heat when it dissolves in water to produce caustic steam or even boil itself. As you've been watching here, when aluminum foil is added to the caustic solution, it's quickly dissolved in a violently exothermic reaction that produces copious volumes of explosive hydrogen gas and choking caustic fumes. The other product of this reaction, and the one we're after, is the salt potassium aluminate, which is possible because aluminum is what's called amphoteric. Amphoteric metals such as aluminum, tin, chromium, lead, etc. can form highly soluble salts upon reaction with bases, as well as acids, which I find pretty cool. Anyway, I go ahead and keep adding aluminum foil until no more dissolves, and then I leave this beaker overnight to allow it to clear up. When I came back the next day, I found that a layer of sediment had settled to the bottom of the beaker, which is likely undissolved potassium aluminate, as far as I can tell. This didn't happen when I made sodium aluminate in the exact same manner, so maybe the potassium version is just a lot less soluble, and I'm not entirely sure. Regardless, I simply passed this all through vacuum filtration to obtain a clear solution of pure potassium aluminate. And this is important because aluminum foil contains small amounts of iron as well as a waxy coating that you want to remove. This step also filtered away the precipitated potassium aluminate, which I then dissolved in some excess potassium hydroxide solution before filtering again. The resulting filtrate still had a bit of particulate, so I tried running it through some cotton to clean it up a bit, which seemed to help. And now that I had a clean and clear solution of potassium aluminate, the final reaction step was to neutralize this with sulfuric acid. This reaction is also extremely exothermic, so it's important to either make small additions like I did, or dilute your acid beforehand. As a side note, I did notice the solution here was a distinct light yellow color. And this is either due to the breakdown of the waxy coating in the aluminum foil, or because iron is actually amphoteric, which would be news to me. Regardless, neither will make its way into the final product, so it's not really a big deal. Anyway, as the solution neutralizes, the potassium aluminate will first form insoluble aluminum hydroxide and very soluble potassium sulfate. However, as the solution acidifies and reaches a pH of around 3, the aluminum hydroxide will form the target chemical potassium aluminum sulfate, or alum. And as a side note, if you use the larger volume of water than I did here, this step may result in the white precipitate redissolving. I went ahead and filtered my crude alum to remove any leftover impurities from the aluminum foil, transferred it to a beaker, and then added boiling water until it completely dissolved. 
I then balanced the pH back down to 3 with a bit of sulfuric acid before boiling off as much excess water as possible. As you may have noticed, this process was very qualitative. I didn't really get an initial mass of any of my reagents as you might have noticed, and with that said, the volume of water I boiled away here was pretty arbitrary, and I kind of just took it off when I felt I was at a good point. This was then allowed to sit overnight at room temperature to allow alum crystals to form. And when I came back the next day, I had some absolutely beautiful crystal formation. Alum crystals aren't particularly colorful, but their shape and clarity is incredibly beautiful, so I'm thinking at some point I might try to grow the biggest one I can to see how it looks. Anyway, I go ahead and chill this in an ice bath for about an hour to allow the crystals to grow a bit more before collecting them all by vacuum filtration. These are rinsed thoroughly using a bit of ethanol and allowed to dry completely by simply letting them sit out on my desk for a few days. I can't remember if I got a final mass on this, but honestly it wouldn't matter much anyway since I didn't get an initial mass. And in any case, yeah, that's one way you can very easily make alum using simple household chemicals. And as I said a long time ago, the idea for making this video came after how ridiculous I found it when I needed alum for a project only to find out that it was being sold at my local grocery store for $6 for an only 1.9 ounce jar. Being a very simple salt and clearly very easy to make, I decided instead to just go home and make some in the manner I just showed. Now my original plan was to end this video here, but I went back and tried this process again but in reverse, dissolving the aluminum first in sulfuric acid and then a subsequent neutralization with potassium hydroxide. I didn't think this process would result in a pure final product due to all the nasty byproducts produced when sulfuric acid dissolves aluminum foil, but it actually cleaned up surprisingly nicely and was honestly easier than my first method. To get started with method number two, I simply added some concentrated sulfuric acid to a beaker along with some aluminum foil. Sulfuric acid won't begin to dissolve the metal until a bit of water is added, but the second water is added, the two react very, very aggressively. This produces a lot more foaming than the hydroxide did, as well as a lot of brown discoloration. I went ahead and kept adding water and aluminum foil until no more would dissolve and then left it overnight. When I came back the next day, this had fused into a solid mass of aluminum sulfate, which is also a form of alum called papermaker's alum and can be used in a lot of the same ways as potassium alum, but it's far harder to crystallize. Anyway, I next add some water and apply heat until the mass dissolves, and then I pass it through two layers of coffee filters twice, which did a shockingly good job of removing all the impurities from the aluminum foil. I then poured my solution back into my beaker and added a saturated potassium hydroxide solution until the pH reached 3. I filtered one final time before allowing it to sit overnight to crystallize, and when I came back the next day, I found that this time it had mostly formed one huge crystal which I was actually able to get out mostly intact. This thing was pretty awesome, and I still haven't crushed it up for storage because I like it too much. Anyway, as you can clearly see, this process is equally viable whether you begin by dissolving aluminum with potassium hydroxide or sulfuric acid. And to my surprise, it was honestly easier starting with sulfuric acid. And with that I'll close and say that I hope you found this video interesting, and as always, I want to give a huge shout out to my incredible patrons for their generous contributions. Your support is vital and very appreciated. And to everyone else, if you'd like to see more content like this, consider subscribing on TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, or even by becoming a patron yourself. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.